let's quickly review what we talked about yesterday. Uh, we defined area. We're going to keep coming back to this. If there's ever any confusion, a lot of times just remembering what the agreed area was. We'll clear that up. Okay. So area is the space that something takes up, and we talked about that, we talked about that, and, and came up with it. It's the number of squares that fit inside of a shape. We, have some, we talked about other shapes, right? That we could use instead of squares? Yeah. What, did we, what kind of shapes did we talk about? Triangles. Triangles would work or they wouldn't work? They would. They would? Molly? Um, we talked about using circles. Good circles. Would not work. Not work, right? They don't fit together very well. Rectangles. Rectangles, would they work? Yes. Yes, we could fill a space with rectangles pretty easily. <coughs> Hexagons. Hexagons, would they work? They're an interesting one. They do work. They uh, lots of sides, but it turns out that they fit together very nicely. Uh, any others? It really is anything. It's just that squares are probably the most convenient one. We could use stars. We could use pentagons. They don't work very well. They don't fit together like squares or, or hexagons do. But squares. We settled on squares because they're convenient, they're easy, they're the same on, on all sides, they've got 90 degrees, they fit right up in the corner of a rectangle really well. Okay? The number of squares that fit inside a shape. So then we talked about a rectangle and said, well, we can uh, figure out how many squares fit in here by putting squares in there, right? Drawing squares. And you just keep sliding squares in there. But do I need to fill this in with squares? Is it necessary to know how many squares, like how much room there is for squares to fit? No. <clears throat> okay, so then we came up with a way of not finding the number of squares, but calculating how much room there is for squares, right? How many squares could fit in there? We said, well, I just need to know how many can fit this direction and how many can fit this direction. And if five can fit this way, well, then it's wide enough for five to fit. And it's tall enough for three to fit that way. So there's enough room for three rows of five. So if there's three rows of five squares, how many squares is that? 15. 15. So what's the area of this rectangle? 15 squares. 15 squares, perfect. 15 squares. And until we have any idea of how big these squares are, that's all we can say. It's 15 squares. All right. Now, uh, my last class, we had to really clear up some confusion. I'm not sure this confusion may be there. Should we, should we square the 15? No. 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 The word square. Because it's not cubed. It's not cubed? Or it's not, like, I'm filling out with squares, and it's going to be squares. All right. That's pretty, we got that pretty straightforward. It took a lot of convincing for my other class for, for a few minutes. Yeah, I mean, quite simply, the area is the number of squares. Do we know the number of squares? No. Oh, wait, yeah. 15. We know the number For this one. Yes, we do. 15, right? 15 squares. No need to multiply 15 by itself. No need to double 15. No need to multiply 15 by 4, right? Once we know the number of squares, we know the number of squares. We know the area. All right. Um, but why do you think some people might be confused about that squaring thing? Because they think that's the final answer. And we don't really know how to do that squaring part. Okay. Because they think you need to multiply it by itself so that you can know how big the squares are. Okay. Um, um, why else might they be confused? about I think that they have to square the team. They might think the square is the label as in measurements, as in the unit for like feet or inches, and then you'd have to add square to make it so they think it'd be okay. So there's squares, so maybe they think squares mean square the 15. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is there a, like when you say something, like the area of a room, you say the whole thing? Is there a squared in there somewhere that you say? Does the word squared come out of your mouth, maybe? Why? Um, because it's 
like the floor and I guess the ceiling as well are going to be in the area of the room. Right. So you say this is this room is maybe I don't know. For example, there might be one that's 100 feet square. It means that everything the foot that is I don't know like squares that's a foot long. Yeah. Five foot wide. Exactly right. That's what the square is about. Because right? each of these squares, as we look at them, we can, you know, we're trying to get a notion of how big is this square. So if we measured it, and it was one foot on this side and one foot on that side, all right? and then each side is a foot. One, each side is a foot. What's the area of this one square here? Yeah? One. It's certainly reasonable to call it one. It's, it's one by one. How many squares is it? It's one, right? But how big is it? One, one square foot of square. Yeah. yeah, and that's just kind of a name we give it, right? If you multiply a foot by a foot, you get a foot square, right? A foot times a cell, that's what squaring is. Multiply something by itself. So this is a one square that is a foot on either side. So if we now say, well, we know how big the squares are, that's where feet squared, miles squared, or inches squared, centimeters squared, right? They're just, that's how many squares you can fit in there that are a foot on either side. So if this is a, if I, this is five feet by three feet, there's enough room for 15 squares that are a foot on either side, or on all sides, because that's the way squares are. Yeah? Great. <coughs> Doing well here, as long as we're not confused and, and Ourselves. Everybody good? Okay. Squares. Don't square 15. Once you know the number of squares, you're done. You know the area. So now what we're going to do, we're going to talk about triangles. All right. I don't really care if you memorize the, the formula for the area of a triangle. Right. We're trying to come up with that. Okay. Are you guys on board with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to convince you? No. Mm -hmm. Another class that still need some convincing that it's worth their time to like, understand something and not just memorize something. Are uh, you okay with that? Are you on board with that? Or should we debate that? We're good. We're good? Okay, here we go. We're going to find how do we calculate the area of a rectangle in a way that we can understand rather than just memorize. So here's a triangle, an example of a triangle. Just so you know, I was trying to try it so that this, none of these angles is a right angle. They're all just Whatever. None of them are 90 degrees, though. Okay. So we have an issue if we're just going to approach it like we did with the rectangle and just throw squares in there. Right? We have a real problem here. Because right away, what happens? It fits. It fit. Either I cut some of it off, or I don't fill in that part of the triangle, right? And I can't really count like how much of a square is this. I'm not sure. It looks like half, but can I be sure that it's exactly half? No. no, I can't really be that sure about that. Uh, and you know, we have we just have these gaps. Whether the gaps are from bleeding over and hanging outside, or not being able to fill this in with an entire square. Of course, I can't. I can't do this, right? No. I can't bring in smaller squares because I can't. Like this isn't two squares. Well, you could do all small. Yeah, so I got to choose one, right? So I, I could go smaller, but no matter how small the square is, there's all this little gap, right? So we could switch. We could switch to triangles. And that's not a bad idea. And then I could say how many triangles fit, right? and then I could fit triangles inside of other triangles. But then the thing about areas, we want to be able to compare areas. Like how does the area of this triangle compare to the area of some other rectangle, right? Yeah. So. I mean, it's not a bad idea. It's just that we decided last time we were going to settle on squares. Right? We'll use squares. And in fact, that's how we kind of loosely define area, number of squares. So because we want to keep it the same for all shapes, we'll stick with squares. Yeah? Um, what if you just added like a triangle on top that was the same size? So it'd be parallel sides. Well, let's see. I mean, Daniela, I had actually Daniela. Why don't you 
go ahead and tell. Um, well, what I do when I'm not using the formula or whatever okay. is you can either like cut it where the yeast has a pinnacle. Okay, cut it straight down. Mm -hmm. And then kind of move that one side. You move. can move that one side over so then it fit kind of square, but that triangle doesn't work very well. Um, and, but what you're supposed to do in, say, like a um, formula is you're supposed to um, do base times height times one half, which means that there, you can probably take one side of the triangle and duplicate it so then it'll be like exactly so the same this size. Part to duplicate it? Well it, I guess for um yeah you, you could or you could take the other side or and this then side. fit it on and then you can fill it up with squares and then you just divide it by half. So you're saying copy this. So I guess we'll we'll just treat this like a copy of this. Okay, and then what do I do with it? And then you rotate it so then it'll fit in there. If I fit, you mean right here? Yep. Oh. And then you can find the area of that square, uh -huh. and then you have to divide it by half. Okay, so you're saying if we, if we just kind of cut this into two triangles, then uh, copy this one, flip it around, we have the exact same thing, so let's just say it makes a rectangle. I don't have to argue about it. Um, and so this rectangle you can find the area of, but uh, then you only want half that because half of it is the triangle, or this piece of the triangle. And then do the same kind of thing over here. Mm -hmm. oh, right, so. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So now, one little thing here is, that would mean that we're looking at these two rectangles we'd have to measure from here to there and then separately from there to there, right? Because we have these two rectangles. Yeah. Okay. And then add it together, and, okay. And that certainly would work. That's, that's good. How about this? Using that same idea, right? Copying and flipping and, and uh, saying that this is half of that and this is half of this. How about if we do this? We'll look at this as one big rectangle How would you find the area of that rectangle? You um, go ahead and you show me the squares right there, you divide by two. But how do we find the area of the rectangle? That's the question. How do you find the area of the rectangle? Base times height. Base times height. What's the, what is, how does the, the base of this rectangle and the base of the original triangle compare? They're the same. same. They're the same. That's the way we made it, right? They perfectly match up. So this base here is the base of the triangle and of the rectangle base. How about the height of the rectangle and the height of the triangle? Same. They're the same. So, all I'm saying is finding this area and taking half of it, finding this area and taking half of it, and then adding all that together would be the same as finding the area of the whole big rectangle and finding what? The area of the, the, area of the rectangle. Divided by and one half. Half, because we can see by, by Daniela's argument that this is half of this part of it. This is half of this part of it. So the triangle must be half the rectangle. The triangle is just made half the rectangle. So half of base times height is the area of the triangle. Yes? Yeah, because um, for those extra pieces that you added onto there, yeah. they can make another one of that triangle. So exactly. there's basically two. So you Right, Isn't it? Yeah. Because I was thinking, I was like, would you do it by four because there's four pieces? And I'm like, no, because it makes two triangles. So I like how you, you know, you come up with another way of saying it. Because so, this is just a copy of this part of the triangle. This is just a copy of this part of the triangle. To prove to yourself that the triangle is exactly, not almost, not close, but exactly half of this rectangle, you can say, well, I can just take these since they're copies, put them together, I make exactly one more of these triangles. So there's two triangles making up to one rectangle. One rectangle or one triangle must be half of that. So after you like find the how many squares fit into the, that 
triangle on this side, and then you take it, flip it over, and then you add that up, and then you divide it by one half. Almost. Well, it's more like we we make it a rectangular shape, so that like finding the number of squares is much more simple. Space times height. Oh. Okay. So rather than you said find the area of this, how many squares fit in, flip it around, add those two together. See, if I could just find the area of that thing, I wouldn't really need to double it and yeah. add it together and all that kind of stuff. What, what we're saying is, you can find the area, now you can just slide those pieces yeah, right in there. Right. Find how many squares and just cut it in half. Okay. And it's, it's even more straightforward than that. You just take the base of the, the triangle times the height of the triangle. Well, that's the, that would be the area of a rectangle that has that base height. And the triangle we've shown a couple different ways is exactly half of that rectangle. There it is, one half times base times height. So now, instead of saying, oh, I remember that it's one half times base times height, you know, that's pretty easy to remember. You don't have to remember. You can just really quickly make that rectangle and say, oh, yeah, it's half, because this, this is half, and that's half, and so it must be half of the rectangle, just base times height times one half. Okay. And that's the kind of approach to learning, not just math, but in general, that is more solid. It's, it's much less likely to go a week and forget all about it. Okay? A week from now, this visual thing right, sticks with you. You can recall it. This, if I just tell you it's one half times base times height, it could just fall right into your head. This probably won't. Molly? Um, I just want to say that I like that you're explaining this more to us because before I didn't really understand why one half times weight times height, mm -hmm. but now I do. I just was like, oh, that's the formula that I just do. But I like how you're thinking about it. Well, I'm glad you did this class. This is really good, as far as I can tell. Good attitudes towards doing that. Like I said, my other, my other class, we may need to have a little powwow because they're, they're struggling. You know, why, if I already know this, do we have to do all this? It's kind of hard because they've got a big class and everybody's talking. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys' good attitude. Uh, if you feel like you're having a bad attitude, just let me know and we'll see if we can fix it. All right. So we've done triangles, right? We can take any triangle, we can do exactly that and convince ourselves that well, the triangle is just half the rectangle. Right? So let's talk about the parallelogram, right? Let's see if we can take the parallelogram, copy it. Don't copy it, chop it up, move stuff around, whatever we want to do. See if we can turn it into a more rectangular shape, right? And then maybe the parallelogram is like half of that one or a third of that one, or maybe it's the same as that rectangle, okay? So any ideas what we could do? All right, so I've done this before. So okay. you know that one side where it's point, pointing, right? That one side. Over <laughs> here? <laughs> yeah. Okay. You take that, you cut it. So like straight down from here? Yes. Okay. Next, then you take that part, so and then you paste it, and then... Let me just color this in, so yes. I have something that I can move. And you put it over on the other side. Uh, okay. Take this yeah, and then you place it on the other side. Slide it over here, yeah. make it into a rectangle. Nice. And really what we have is like, this is not here anymore. We cut it off and moved it, and just copy it. So then, you know, this is 90, this is obviously 90, we, we did it that way, that's where parallel, parallel grams are, that's what you said in parallel. This is 90, because that was, this must be 90. So we have what? A rectangle. A rectangle. Okay, how do you find the area of a rectangle? Base side. Right. Base side. All right, so let's look at that base. Base. Well, that's the base of the rectangle. But how does that compare to the base of the parallelogram? So this base of this of this parallelogram is made of this piece and this piece. And if I move this piece over here, it doesn't change how long it is. You can also look at the top of this parallelogram, right? This side didn't get cut at all, and it just goes across the whole rectangle. Yeah. Uh, also, another way if you don't like if you can't really use visual because it's like on a test and you can't really draw a whole lot, then you just take the base part at the very bottom. Measure down to the base, and that would be your height. So. Right. Yeah. From there, 
so that is what we would call the height of the parallelogram, which is also the height of this rectangle that we made. Right. And well, the area that rectangle is. How do I figure out how many squares fit in there? Right. Along the base, I don't know, it's 100 squares can fit there. And along this height, 40, 40 can fit, 50 can fit. We can just multiply those together because that's how many will fit in a row. This is how many rows can fit inside this rectangle. Okay. Do you have to divide it in half or anything? No. Because uh, this piece right here that makes up the rest of this rectangle came from over here. Right. You just rearrange the pieces of the parallelogram to make that right. Uh, or you could also want to make it a little complicated for yourself. Okay. That part that we cut off, uh -huh. you could, that was actually a triangle, you would find the um, area of that triangle, and then, um, then there's two parts that are like triangles. You can find the area of those triangles, and you can find the area of the rectangle in the middle, and you all add it together. But, oh, you could do like this. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one. Yeah. The, the nice thing about this one is that it just takes, like for, for your approach, you'd have to measure part of the base, right, and this part of the base. Uh, but that's true. You could find the area of, well, really, like there's a triangle there, a triangle there, and this would be one half base times height. We just did that, right? But we don't even have to do one half base times height because we have two of those. So we just do base times height of this triangle here, and right? that would be this triangle plus this triangle, and then, yeah, but we probably would. But it certainly would do the job. Yeah. So that would be good for if there weren't. So if there were like the parallelogram and then that part that you X out didn't exist uh -huh. ever. Yeah. So you just have to convert. So the shape is just this uh, trapezoid, mm -hmm. right? And it's just like this. Yeah. Like cutting things into pieces. Here's the triangle. Here's the rectangle. Yeah. Wait. So it would just be a regular base then height. Um, you wouldn't have to do the one half? No, because this base times height we're using is uh, this base of this rectangle and this height of this rectangle. Right? Yeah. You can see the height of the rectangle and the height of parallelogram are the same. Yeah. That's pretty clear. Now the base of this rectangle we talked about is the same as the base of the parallelogram from here to there. So it's all right. the same? So it's the same. It's, it's, you can kind of intuitively see it too. Like, I see this yeah. rectangle is made of a lot of yellow from the parallelogram, and then there's like this white gap. But when you slide this yellow part over here, yeah, it, it, yeah, it is. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so the area of the parallelogram perfectly fits inside. Like all the squares that we filled the parallelogram, parallelogram also would fill perfectly the rectangle that we made. Okay. We're gonna get to a circle today. Let's see. What time are we? Thirty forty. Here we have, what is this thing? Trapezoid. Trapezoid. <laughs> Just two parallel sides, that's all. Let me, let me really exaggerate this so everybody can see. Like, none of the sides have to be the same. Uh, they don't have to be equal to each other. The only thing, two parallel sides. One set of parallel sides. So a parallelogram is a trapezoid, just a special trapezoid where these two sides are parallel and the same length, right? So that kind of forces these other two to be parallel and the same length as well. All right. So this is a kind of a crazy shape. There's like, no, it doesn't seem to be any nice cutting and moving like the trapezoid was. Okay, but maybe we could do something. What's that? How so? How would we do it?
Well, I'm just going to, in case somebody wants to use that, I'm just going to leave that there. You could do what Molly said and do the line on the other side and just solve the triangle, triangle, and then square. Right, that's what we were saying just a second ago, and I was saying that the only problem with that, and it would work, yeah. is that I'd have to take this measurement, and then this measurement, and then this measurement, and like do three different calculations. Okay? But instead, we could take like this measurement and this measurement, and the height. That's a pretty common thing to take a measurement of. And like those, just those few measurements could uh, be used in a calculation. How do we come up with it? Like, just throw around some ideas. You could like <coughs> color it in. Color it, like make a copy of it? Yeah, and then just okay. flip it up. Just copy it? No, like no. the corners. The, corner. the triangle. Yeah. You also right have the like, the like, like a rectangle. I guess I don't know what you mean quite yet. So the black piece right there? Yes. Flip it oh. 90 degrees. Just take it. Just make copies of those. It's going to be a bit of an issue here. Yeah. Do that. Do that same thing to the other side. Uh -huh. So we'll just go ahead and go like this. Ooh, Caleb's in. That's what I said. So just get okay. Now, all right, we take this base down here, right, times the height. And that's the area of what? A rectangle. Of the rectangle that, like, completely <coughs> captures this trapezoid. No. The problem is we're looking for the area of the trapezoid, right? So much how much of the trapezoid is, or how much of the rectangle is the trapezoid? Is it half? One two third. thirds? Two One third? Two thirds? Uh, one third. Yeah, it's two thirds. Two thirds, yeah. Two thirds. Why do you know for sure that it's two thirds? Because there's two sides. Well, they're not all part. There's the three different. pieces to the um, trapezoid, trapezoid. The triangles on the sides, and then there's rectangles in the middle. Right, okay. So the, that would be two. No, it would be two, like six, uh, yeah, <laughs> it would be one third of it. One third? Yeah, because there's six pieces in that, and then those extra pieces are two of them, so it would be one third. two-thirds, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, it is not, uh, we would have to show that it is. And we haven't, we're just saying it has so many pieces, but then are these pieces the same size as each other, right? So to show that it's two-thirds, we really have to show that it's two-thirds. It's not two-thirds, okay? It's a half. Well, it can't be a half, it's got to be more than that half of that rectangle, right? Because oh, it's, um, it's half of this part of the rectangle, and it's half of this part, but it's all of this part. So it's three fourths. Sounds like a guess. Is it a guess? No. Yeah, it's a guess. <laughs> What's that? They're not all the same size. Yeah, I could take this, I could stretch it out like really, 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 really oh, far. Oh, two fifths. Right? We're yeah. guessing, right? Yeah. Until no, we have I'm a convincing see, thing of why it has five yeah, pieces two thirds. Daniel? It could be just like <coughs> find the two rectangles. Regular. The two rectangles look like regular. Uh, and divide by half. And then find the base and height to the front or the rectangle in the center. And then add the triangle areas to the rectangle area. And then you have the yeah. area. That would find the area of that trapezoid. It's just that there is a cleaner way to do it. I just say we just put squares in and call it good. Now we're all on board with, with figuring this out together. Yeah. All right, let's do that. I'm just going to leave you hanging. At most, I'm going to ask you to try to come up with something on your own work. But maybe we'll figure it out together. So like, that's a good idea. Make a rectangle. And it's, it's nice because we make used copies of parts of it, okay? But so far we've come up with the idea of finding the area of this triangle, fine, this triangle, this rectangle, of all these pieces of it, 
and then adding it all together. And then it just gets into like a lot of, if I try to make that into a formula, it's a really complicated formula because then I have to give names to this and this and this. Uh, height's fine, all of the heights are the same for all of those. But then, here, let's, let's give them all names and see what it looks like. Well, let's avoid numbers because that could be confusing. Let's choose like x, y, and z, and h because h is the height. Okay, so for the area of that guy there, I have to do one half of x times h, base times height for that triangle there. Or you just do it like this one half base times height. And then this one would be y times h. And then this one would be one half z times h. Right? And then I'm add them all together. That's my formula? Yeah. One half xh plus, one, plus yh plus one half zh. Right? I mean, if that's, if that's what we come up with, then fine. But there is a cleaner way to go about it. I don't know. I don't know. Being a quitter is not going to be helpful. I don't, I'm not being quitting, I just don't know how to do it. But <laughs> then I guess you're not a quitter. Exactly. There you go. I, I, said, I, I, I said I was good. <laughs> yeah, you know, somebody who says they quit. All right. Mm. Uh, all right. But maybe, you know, maybe we don't want to do it exactly that way because we're having trouble figuring out how much of the rectangle is this trapezoid. We throw an idea. We can throw an idea at you. Let's back it up. I'm just going to put this idea. Let's use a copy of it. It's a complete copy. Now whatever we have, like if we find the area of both of these somehow, what will we have to do to find the area of the trapezoid? Divide by two. Divide by two, right? Because if we, have, if we find the areas of both of these together, we want half of that. So with the idea of using a copy of it, now what do you think? Do you have ideas? We could rotate it to rotate take it. a parallel view. Oh, Just jumping right to So all that's left now is we're going to have to use we're going to write a formula of some kind. This is horrible. Kind of that's what I was thinking. Huge. It's just space time type divided by true time. You don't even have to do that. that. It's just let's not use words like that, please. So this is this is gone. It's moved over here. It's a, uh, what shape is this big thing? Uh, oh, oh, oh. Now, the only thing is, we have to, well, find the area of this rectangle and then relate it back to the original parallelogram. But can it do not even worry about that and then just do base times height and then divide by like two? Well, I'm just proving to you that this can go over there and become oh. a rectangle that base times height will find that area. Oh, but we still don't have to do that. Oh, you don't, I mean, are you asking me if when you find the area of a trapezoid, do you have to cut it up like that? Yeah. No, this is just, like there's a formula for finding the area, right? Yeah. But just throwing it at you and saying that's it doesn't mean anything. This proves that that formula works. Um, okay. Now, so what's, what's this that I've, I've put the squiggly on? <laughs> what part of the rectangle? The base. The base. That's what I would measure and call the base. And this is? I, I, but. I make it right Okay, we have base, uh, base times height, all right. Then what do we have to do to find the area of the trapezoid? You have to divide by seven, I mean two. All right. The only thing is now, this base of this rectangle, we have to relate it back to the original trapezoid. How do we use the original trapezoid to find the length of this base here? By one half times base uh, times height. One half times base times height to figure out how long this is? Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh. How long it is. And just, we need to relate it back to the original trapezoid. You, to find that, you multiply the original base by 2. 
by two. Which base? Um, <laughs> I don't know. The bottom one. <laughs> Does this look like it's no, just... No, not by... Never mind. Not by two? <laughs> I don't get it. No, never mind. Um, well, in the original trapezoid, there's this, right? And then there's this. And add the top and the bottom. You add the top and the bottom things of the trapezoid. You get the new base. And you get the base of this rectangle we made. Okay, so we just need to give those things names and call it good. X and Y. X and Y. You could call it X and Y. No reason why not. Uh, but if you look at a textbook or you just like Google it, it's going to say B1 and B2. Right? If I add B1 plus B2, I get B1. B. B. So this guy is actually base one plus base two times base times the height. Yeah. <laughs> this. Oh, I see. Okay. I see. So you there. I got a question. I got a question. Yes. So you, after you get done adding the trapezoid, like how would we add the trapezoids? Squares. <coughs> Well, we're not adding trapezoids. I mean adding the length of like base one with base two. How would we do that? The ruler? Yeah, I mean to, to know how long this is we would measure the ruler or maybe it's a given, right? Oh yeah. No. Okay. But those are things that are no, about the easiest things that we could measure <laughs> about the about shapes, the how long a side is. Okay. Alright. So we measure this side, we measure this side, we add it together, we get this side of the rectangle, the height's the same. Okay. So that rectangle is made up of two of the trapezoids. So we divide it in half when we're done with that. So we add the two bases together, that gives us the base of the rectangle. There's the height, okay? And that base of the rectangle times the height is the area of the rectangle that's twice as much as we need, so one half. Let's talk about circles. Circles are a real troubling one. It's you like diameter times circumference. <laughs> <laughs> and circumference. pi times radius. Diameter times square, circumference. Right? Yeah, pi times radius. So you could do pi times diameter. Diameter, pi times diameter. Or pi times r, r squared. R because that's that's a formula. Yeah, we nailed it. No, <laughs> we don't need to do that anymore. We said a bunch of stuff, <laughs> and <laughs> someone may be right, and you may all be wrong. I am right. Yeah. I, know, I know the formula. It's pi times radius squared, or pi times. No, no, it's pi times radius times two. Yeah, pi times radius two times square plus two. Square would be radius by itself. No, it's pi times radius or pi times radius squared. It's either one. There, yeah, it depends on what you got. Diameter. What you got. Radius is half the diameter. Nailed it. Radius times two. Okay, good job. Same thing. Same thing. I don't know if it will probably. None of those things are the same. It probably work either way. No, you could just come out to a different answer, but it depends on if you got you have a diameter coming into. A diameter is the whole entire half of the square. A radius is just yeah, one. Radius is just doing it. I'm confused. You don't need to be confused. Yeah, I understand how to do it. So no, no, it's hard to do. Okay. All right. So a lot of things have been said. One of the only as many as one of those things could be right and all of them could be wrong, okay? So I've heard pi times right. diameter, I've heard pi r squared, I've heard pi times radius times two, I've heard pi times, <laughs> I know, I've heard a lot of different things. No, the pi, pi times pi radius squared. is also pizza. Pi times diameter. And then pi times No matter what it is, just somebody yelling it out in front of the class, it's really not sufficient, OK? 
okay? Because somebody happened to have remembered it right, luckily. It's obvious <laughs> that you do not know for sure what it is. No, I don't know. You forgot. You forgot. Yeah. I'm watching you, know. <laughs> you forgot. I'm watching it. Okay? So let me help you hopefully not forget. Okay? All right. Let's do this. No more shapes. This is algebra. I'm in a comedy club. There's no shapes oh, in here. There, I guarantee there are shapes on there. That's probably square. Oh, yeah. And you're not on board anymore? Yeah, what? You're not on board anymore? No, we're on board. We're still on board. Let's get it this done we're before. Sorry, we're but I'm bored at my brain wanders. Okay, well, don't oh, take it out on everybody else. <laughs> and I'm allow hard. other people to do it. It's down to Great, stop. Uh, so we got a circle. I'm going to show you kind of a cool way to make a rectangle out of this circle. Okay. Um, the first thing we need to remember, though, is pi. Right? Number. How big is this number five? Well, to say that it's infinitely big would mean to say that it's infinitely big. It's not infinitely big. How's it going back there? Are we accomplishing a lot? Yeah. I'm listening. It's not infinite. It has an infinite number of digits. You're in alphabetical order. Yeah. 3.14159, and so on and so on forever and ever and ever. Okay. So, the circumference of this circle, the perimeter of the circle, is it's a funny thing 2 pi r. Now, Two pi r okay, is, is a funny way to write this. I'm not sure why. Because what is what would two stop times r be? The diameter. The diameter. Okay. So this could also be called pi times d. Pi times d. And how big is pi? A little bit bigger than three. Right? Let's look at the diameter. Okay. Now, can you use your imagination? Yes. Okay, imagine you take this diameter and you arch it into like a circle shape. So you bend it around the circle. It might cover about that much. Do you agree? How many of those do you think you could fit around here?